In this video, we're going to talk about definite integrals of acceleration and velocity. Draw for yourself an acceleration versus time graph and a velocity versus time graph. And then on your acceleration versus time graph, give yourself just a straight line. If I was to indefinitely integrate the acceleration equation, I would get the area under the entire graph indefinitely that tells me the change in velocity of the object because the area of acceleration versus time graphs tell us change of velocity. And if I indefinitely integrated like that, I would say summa infinitely add up the acceleration at any point, which is like a height of a line, times little dt, which is like the width of an infinitely small line. And then I summa add it all up forever, so I get the change in velocity. So that's the indefinite integral. But we are not interested in the indefinite integral. We want the definite integral, which means I want to know from some time t1 to t2, how much area is there between the function and the x-axis. This will give me a specific or a definite change in velocity from t1 to t2. Well, all that changes about our equation is we write t1 as the lower bound and t2. So that's our definite integral equation for acceleration. Uh, for velocity, it's very similar. If I want to find the area from t1 to t2, this would tell me the change of position, or we call that the displacement. Um, delta v doesn't have a fancy name like delta x does, we just call it change of velocity. But change of position is called displacement. And we would um, integrate from so our lower bound, t1 to t2, the velocity equation with respect to time. So that is our definite integral for velocity that will tell us change of position. Let's use these equations. The acceleration of a remote control car is 6 meters per second to the fourth times t squared plus negative 3 meters per second cubed times t. Now, before I even read part A or part B, I'm just going to go ahead and write this a little bit more math friendly for myself, which means I'm going to take out the units and just write 6t squared minus 3t. And I'm going to trust that the units agree um, and give me units of meters per second squared for acceleration when I finally plug in a value of t. So that's my acceleration equation a bit more math friendly. Then for part A, how much does the car's velocity change from 2 to 4 seconds? This is asking me to find delta v. And I just wrote that delta v is equal to the integral of your acceleration equation with respect to time. Well, I know that the acceleration equation is 6t squared minus 3t, and I am integrating from 2 to 4 seconds. So I would put 2 on the bottom and 4 on the top. OK, well, now I need to evaluate, or I'm sorry, find the antiderivative and then evaluate it from 2 to 4. So the antiderivative of 6t squared is t cubed, 6 divided by that new power 3, which is just 2. So 2t cubed minus t squared, 3 divided by that new power of 2. OK, so that's the antiderivative. I've written out the antiderivative. But I still need to evaluate it from 2 to 4 seconds. Now, to do this, I would plug in um, 4 seconds minus so that whole thing, sorry, minus um, the equation at 2 seconds. So 2 times 2 cubed minus 3 halves times 2 squared. And this is going to give me the change of velocity. Remember that I can quickly um, find this answer or check my algebra by going to y equals and graphing the acceleration equation. So 6x uh, instead of t squared minus 3x. So I can graph this equation. Then go to second calc, 
down to option 7, which will integrate. Or I can just press L, which will integrate from my lower limit. So I put in 2. And then my upper limit, I put in 4. Enter 4. And I get 94. So if you ever feel like you do this algebra wrong, uh, you can go ahead and use your calculator to evaluate and see if you get it right. So 94. Um, so that's the change, velocity from 2 to 4 seconds. To save some space, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this and write 94. Oh, you know what? I needed to write 94 meters per second anyway. Change of velocity. Okay, now part B. If the car was moving 3 meters per second left when t is 0. What is important about that? Why do I need to know that? Well, when I took the derivative, the antiderivative of the acceleration equation, um, which again is 6t squared minus 3t, when I took the derivative, the antiderivative, sorry, I found the velocity function. And the derivative was 2t cubed minus 3 halves t squared. But when you take the antiderivative, um, you're always missing that piece of information, the constant of integration, which when we were asked to find the change of velocity, that constant of integration went away um, because it would have been subtracted on both sides during this step. But now that I want to find um, the displacement from 2 to 4 seconds, I have to know well, what was the constant of integration for the velocity function. Remember that the constant of integration is always like the y-intercept of the function that you're looking at, or the initial value of the equation. So for v, the y-intercept, the c, the cost of integration, is v0. And what I'm going to try and do is figure out from the information given here what is v0. So here's how I do that. If the car was going 3 meters a second left when t equals 0 seconds, that's like saying... Um, v of 0 equals negative 3. Or v naught is negative 3. So I'm going to replace my initial velocity v naught with a negative 3 in my equation. Okay, great. Now I can um, find the displacement from 2 to 4 seconds. The way that I do that is I say delta x equals, and then I integrate my velocity equation to t cubed minus 3 halves t squared minus 3, all with respect to t. Uh, and I'm going to integrate that from my lower bound of 2 seconds to my upper bound of 4 seconds. So I would take the antiderivative first, t to the fourth, and then 2 over 4, which is going to give me 1 half. So 1 half t to the fourth minus t to the third. And then that 3 is going to be 3 over 2 times 3, which those 3's cancel. And you get 1 half t cubed minus 3t. Now, again, if this was an indefinite integral, I would need to add plus c, or x naught, because that's the constant of integration. But this isn't an indefinite integral, it's a definite integral, which means I'm going to evaluate. So I put the little bracket on the side from 2 to 4. And doing that will get rid of the initial position. OK, so I plug in 4. Oof. And then I subtract what I get when I plug in 2. Now, again, I don't really trust my algebra skills, and I want to just want to go ahead and maybe have my calculator do this for me because it can calculate. So I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to get rid of the function that I have in there, and I'm going to put in my velocity function this time because I want to integrate velocity to get the delta x, the displacement. So I'm going to put in 2x to the third minus 3 
halves, so 3 divided by 2, x squared minus 3. Okay, so now I'm graphing the velocity equation. Awesome. And I'm going to evaluate from 2 to 4 the definite integral. So second trace, which gives me calculus functions. Pick 7. The lower limit is 2. The upper limit is 4. Enter. And I get 86. So the displacement is a positive 86 meters from 2 to 4 seconds. Great. Let's do another example. The acceleration of Rick's space cruiser follows the equation uh, at squared plus b, where a and b are constants. a equals 2 meters per second to the fourth, and b equals negative 0.5 meters per second squared. The velocity at 3 seconds is 8 meters per second. Okay, well right away, I'm going to write this acceleration as a somewhat math-friendly equation. So, acceleration is 2 t squared minus 0.5, I like to write 1 half, oh, you know what, that's it, minus 1 half, because that's that's b, there's no uh, t next to it. Alright, so that's my acceleration equation. Uh, part a asks you to find the initial velocity. Okay, well, I know that if I'm going to have to find the initial velocity, the first thing that I'm going to have to do is integrate my acceleration equation to get a velocity equation. So if I integrate my acceleration equation um, indefinitely, so I don't worry about bounds, instead I, that means I would do this, 2t squared minus 1 half dt plus v naught, then I would get t cubed 2 divided by 3 minus 1 half t plus v naught. Okay, so I indefinitely integrated to find my velocity equation. Well, now I need to find v naught. And the way that I do that is I write the velocity at 3 seconds is 8 meters per second. So v of 3 equals 8 meters per second. Well, what that means is if I plug in 3 seconds for t, I'm going to get 8. Now I can use this to solve for v naught, the initial velocity. So 8, so this is going to give me 8 equals. Um, and the 2 thirds 3 cubed minus 1 half times 3 is 16.5 plus v naught. And so v naught is 8 minus 16.5. Or v naught is equal to negative 8.5 meters per second. Okay, so now I know v naught is equal to negative 8.5 meters per second, and I can write that right here. So minus. 8.5, which if you wanted to do a fraction, I guess you would do um, let's see, 17 over 2. Okay, great. So now I know v naught is negative 8.5. Let's get rid of this. v naught negative 8.5 or negative 17 over 2 meters per second. Okay, so now we can move on to part B, where it asks us to use the definite integral to find the displacement from 6 to 7 seconds. So delta x, the displacement, is going to be the definite integral. We would use 6 as our lower bound, 7 as our upper. And we plug in our velocity equation. 2 thirds t cubed minus 1 half t minus 17 over 2 with respect to time. Now, Recognize that we could not have done this if we hadn't found v naught from this information right here. So we had to find the initial velocity using that information before we could definitely integrate to get our displacement, our change of position. Okay, so I definitely integrate 
from 6 to 7. Um, sorry. I, I take the antiderivative, so t to the fourth, and then 2 over 3 times 4. Um, so that's going to give me, let's see, 1 over 6. Yeah. Okay, so 1 over 6 t to the fourth uh, minus raise t to the power of 2. And then when I divide 1 half by 2, I'm going to get 1 fourth. And then this becomes negative 17 over 2 t. Okay, so that's the antiderivative. And now I'm going to, uh, instead of indefinitely integrate, which remember, if we were indefinitely integrating, we would say plus x naught, because that's our c, our constant integration. But we don't want to indefinitely integrate. We want to, to definitely integrate. So from 6 to 7. That means that we're going to plug in 6 for t. Put that whole thing in parentheses and then subtract 7 plugged in for t. This is going to give me a lot of algebra, a whole headache of algebra. Um, and what I'm going to do is just go ahead and check to see what it is with my graphing calculator. So remember, I am plugging in the velocity function to find this. So I cleared the old equation. My velocity function is 2 thirds, 2 divided by 3, t, but I'm using x power minus one half you could say one half or 0.5 uh, x minus 17 divided by 2 okay so I'm graphing um, the velocity equation again I'm not putting in my antiderivative I want to graph the velocity equation And then I want to use my evaluation tool of the definite integral, so second trace 7, which gives me the definite integral from lower limit 6 to upper limit 7. And boom, it does all that algebra for me. And I got 172.416 repeating. So let's say 172.4. So. 800 and 72.4 meters. That is the change in velocity from 6 to 7 seconds. Okay, great. So hopefully you have um, learned from this video how to use definite integration for physics problems of acceleration uh, or velocity. I, when I'm showing my work, I typically like to get to this point right here. Uh, and then I know that I'm going to make algebra mistakes. So after I've done that, I have fully justified that I know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go to my calculator, graph it, and, and let it find the definite integral. You are always welcome, of course, to, to do this algebra uh, and see if you can do it. But again, a calculator uh, calculates really well. And so we're using the calculator to do this calculating function. That's why it's called calculus. All right, congratulations. This video is done.